Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Homeless Initiative Advisory Committee February meeting. Um, I'm David Nash, and we'll start with the roll call. Uh, Lance Crawford. Here. David Bartholomew. Here. Jamie Benshaw. Here. Sarah Copley. Here. Elvia Diaz. Present. Rick Freeman is not here. Claire Hubbard, not here yet. Tricia Killian. Present. Uh, Marcus Laws, hopefully coming soon. Dustin Mailman, he notified us that he had uh, some medical things to take care of. Tim McElyay, also recovering from a bug at home. Celeste Ordway. Present. Uh, Joel Steininger. Here. Jennifer T. Here. And welcome, Councilmember Roney, our, our liaison. Um, all right, we have the, I think we have two sets of minutes from meetings in January that were in your packets. Um, do we have a motion to approve those or any discussion? Elvia makes a motion need, to approve. Do you need to approve those separately? I don't think so. Okay. But if I if you think I do, we can. I honestly don't know. Is your motion to approve both sets of minutes, Elvia? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Um, do we have to do the roll call vote? No. no. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Uh, Homeless Strategy Division updates. Emily. Good morning. Happy to see all of you. Can you, is this working? It works for me. I can hear you. Does it sound like it, it's yeah, okay. it's, it's working. Okay, great. Good morning. Um, wanted to share a few a few operational updates with you all from our staff team here at the city um, in the homeless strategy division. Thank you. So we'll go over the point in time count. Um, that event happened recently. I'm going to give you a recap of that, tell you about the federal reports that are um, have just been submitted and are coming up, and then also talk about a new process for letters of support from the continuum of care for partner agencies. So the point in time count, as I think you all know, the point in time count occurred on January 31st, and that count covers all of our continuum of care geography. So that's all of Buncombe County, meaning we sent teams um, outside of the city limits in addition to the, the downtown area. The count is a federal requirement from HUD for every continuum of care. And by federal regulation, that count is specifically um, looking at folks who meet the literal homelessness definition. So that's people who are in emergency shelters, transitional housing, and folks who are unsheltered. And so our emergency shelters and transitional housing programs will submit their data either through HMIS, Homeless Management Information System, or through paper surveys. The unsheltered count was conducted with volunteer teams um, the night of the 31st, and then also the following day at day service locations across the community, so A Hope and Haywood Street, for example. Um, data entry is already underway. I, it's just so exciting to me to have a team. We have capacity now to be you know, much faster in our data entry than in the past, and um, so our goal is certainly to, to do that as quickly as possible and submit early and report out early. We know this data is important for our community. Um, we will also be working on the housing inventory count, which is the other part of the federal requirement that accompanies the point in time count. Housing inventory count tells us how many beds are available on the same night as the point in time count by bed type and by population. I want to say a particular thank you to a lot of folks, but um, certainly to the 75 volunteers that we had who participated in the street count the night of that is a lot of people. Last year we had 48 volunteers, so really, um, really great community support for that event. 
Particular thanks to staff from ABCCM, Homeward Bound, Sunrise, and the VA Medical Center, who um, we had a, a ton of participation from those folks, and it's really beneficial when we have people on those street count teams who are um, working in homeless services themselves and so are you know familiar with folk. They may run into people they already know. That's That really helps um, in that kind of relationship and rapport when you're asking people for that pretty sensitive personal data. Um, I also want to say thank you to the community and economic development staff. So our team in the Homeless Strategy Division uh, all went down sick at the last minute. And so we were not there for the point in time count. And so we passed that ball to our colleagues in the department. So big thanks to them for stepping in and pulling that off. And big thank you to Jamie Benshoff, who uh, spoke at the event to really help folks understand what that experience is like and sort of ground them in what the what the point is, you know, what they're here to do and how to how to remember that we're just talking about human beings and we want to just talk to people like they're people. So thank you for, for doing that. Any questions about the point in time count? Okay. Uh, federal reporting. So HUD requires continuum, continua of care to submit four reports annually to the federal government. Um, those, again, are the point in time count and the housing inventory count. HUD has not given us a deadline for those yet, but they're traditionally in the spring um, so we'll, we'll let you know when that's been published. The third is the Longitudinal Systems Analysis Report. And um, that was submitted January 4th. Real shout out to Charles Young for making that happen a week before the deadline. This is exciting. We're, we're on an exciting path around data in our community. So um, great job on his part in getting that done. That informs HUD's annual report to Congress on national progress um, in the work of ending homelessness. All of this, of course, sort of trickles back down to resources that are available at the local level. And then the fourth is system performance measures, and that report is due February 28th, so it's underway right now. That looks at how um, efficient our homeless service system is in ending homelessness through a handful of metrics. Um, if you were part of Hayek last year, we did a, a report on that to really deep dive into what those data are. And so we will do that again at the March meeting um, to share with you what our system performance measures look like. I will say that as our data are improving, you know, there's always a data lag. So we're reporting in, a, in the prior federal fiscal year. So that's October 1st to September 30th. Um, so our, as our data improve, those system performance measures will become more and more meaningful, but we want to be sure that you're clear on what those data look like now and what, the, um, what we want to be evaluating as we look at system performance. Lastly, um, letters of support. So you know, as you all know, it's common for agencies who are seeking funding for programs to request letters of support, common for funders to expect letters of support to accompany those funding applications. <clears throat> and um, in the past, when letters of support have been requested from the COC, those have come through the, the staff team, um, but we've not had a clear process for the Continuum of Care Board, which is you all, to approve those letters. And so I wanna shift that going forward because really the question is not, you know, does Emily Ball support this application? But the question is, does our Continuum of Care support this application? Is this particular pursuit in alignment with the goals and priorities of the continuum of care? And that, that is the work of this board. Um, so I want to, I'm hoping to establish a clear process today. We'll share this information out with partner agencies. Certainly want to give everyone um, good advance notice and set this up for success. We'll publish this on our website. Um, but the the process, as I envision it, is that um, requesting agencies would submit a form to staff. We would share that with you all in advance of an actual vote. Um, again, all that information and process would be shared out publicly. And then your opportunity is to support programming that's in alignment with the, the strategies of the continuum of care. And then we would facilitate execution of those letters based on your decision. Um, so I am hoping for a little discussion right now about what you would like to see in that process, what kind of information you want to be sure we gather in that form. Um, I, the, the information that I 
would propose we want is the funder, the funding program, the amount requested, whether it's new or renewal. If it's renewal, are there any changes? Um, the project type, meaning, you know, shelter, rapid rehousing, et cetera. Population to be served, scope of the project, outcomes projected, and implementation timeline. And then also looking at continuum of care participation. So uh, is the agency an, an active participant in the work of the continuum of care? Will those data be entered into HMIS? Will the um, project participate in coordinated entry? And does the agency have someone with lived experience on the board of directors? So this is, this is content that makes sense to me, but I'd love your input on um, whether, you, whether there are any of those pieces you don't want and whether there are any additional pieces that you do want. Comments, questions? And maybe it falls under the project type, but I think I would want to know more about why they feel like this is a gap if they're adding a new program on. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I think, some of the conversation um, in the email exchange. Um, what's the timeline for when we want to get the uh, request for the letters of support? Because I know it takes a while to get them through the process. I would, well, I would think that best case scenario, which we won't always have, but that best case scenario would be that, um, that certainly requests are submitted, that there's maybe a monthly deadline so that those requests can then be part of your meeting materials at the upcoming meeting. Are we, I know we don't want this to be the norm, but are we open to, if something comes in at the last minute, are we open to circulating it by email, as long as the information is there? Mm -hmm. How do we decide which ones we will support? Like, are, is it by vote, or how does that work? I was looking at infrastructure, of said agencies. Can you pull your mic down? Oh, sorry. Are we also looking at infrastructure of said agencies? Meaning Can you say more? Well, I want to see hiring practices of agencies. I mean, I know a lot of places that say they do, say what they want to do, but they don't do it within their own agencies. So I want to see everything across the board. Um, I think that's really important as to how we even proceed as a country. So, I mean, I think that's really important to, to really take a fine tooth comb because it's not being done. So we have an opportunity to do something that's not being done. Yes. We can take our time with this. Okay, I, I would encourage us not to make it a essentially another full application process for people to, and if they're asking for a letter of support, it's different than asking for funding that we distribute. But, but I understand that, and maybe that can be part of, a, you know, some aspect of the form so that we can see it. Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, we could look at, you know, com companies that. You know, maybe even donate to really good causes, but then again, in another country, you know, exploit child children and have child labor issues. So I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay, um, David, I just want to go back to your question about whether or not we can vote electronically. I think it's going to depend on what our bylaws say and what the governance structure is as to whether or not those votes have to occur public meeting setting or via email. That's true. My, so, so to the governance uh, work group, let's make sure we have that opportunity um, going forward. So I'll, if it works for you all, I'll draft um, something. I'll draft a form and then circulate that to you for input. And then we'll finalize that and then get that shared out with our community partners and published on the website. Great. So that will include like how we decide, like are we gonna go with the majority or voting? I think, or? I, I, 
we we go with the majority right now, so I don't okay. know why we would do anything different. Okay. But, but yeah. Yeah, I would expect it would be just sort of a standard board vote. All right. Any other? So um, we don't need action on this. You're going to take it back and we'll approve the form next time. Okay. Anything else from the staff? Um, we have a permanent supportive housing project update. Arthur Murray from Step Up is here to, to talk about the Ramada Inn project. Um, your River Ridge. Well, thank you, David. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Arthur Murray from Step Up. I'm um, the Vice President of the uh, Region, so I oversee all our Southeast projects. Um, I'm happy to um, give you um, an update on the uh, project at the Ramada Inn. Um, unfortunately, the uh, construction hasn't yet started. Uh, we're still working through the initial contract phases, and um, that's um, going through the normal processes that um, it takes with um, purchasing and to start construction. Um, what we have done, though, is that uh, we've started to uh, meet with um, community leaders in Asheville to start looking at um, what the um, services would look like at the site, considering what the staffing plan would be. For instance, I've met with um, the VA uh, representative, uh, um, Cherry, and uh, we've looked at um, types of clients that they would want to refer and um, how would the two teams work together because uh, since the uh, VA would like to have staff on site, which is um, really amazing um, in one of these projects that that would happen. So, um, you know, my goal for the next uh, months while um, we're waiting on construction to start and finish is just to um, come to Asheville, meet with as many providers as possible to start building um, a coalition of um, how would we have services at the site. Um, it's usual for us that uh, we partner with community agencies to do that. So um, agencies not only would be providing services to clients that they've already worked with and they're familiar with, for instance, uh, medical or uh, mental health treatment, but um, agencies such as, such as um, ones that do um, harm reduction and those things would come and site train the staff and um, work with them in that way. So um, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, continuing my work with Emily and her team. I've already met with her a few times to discuss um, things from the COC side. So um, if you guys have any questions for us, uh, please let me know. And we'll be happy to, you know, keep this moving along. Thank you. Do you have a target date? At, I know things have stalled on the construction side, but do you have um, a target date in mind? Um, I think as of right now, um, construction is looking to start uh, sometime in March, so um, possibly at the end of the year. Um, it would be great if this could actually happen before Christmas. I always love moving people in around that time. It's a great feeling to go into your, your, you know, your new place and the holidays. Um, so we're hoping for that. Thank you, guys. Jamie, pull your mic around. Okay. Um, have you had any conversations with Sunrise and their peer support for community outreach? I have not yet, but they are on my list of um, agencies that I'd like to connect with. So uh, the first persons I've met with uh, were uh, with the VA, since they will have a presence on site. I've met with Emily, and um, today I'm also meeting with um, uh, Jenny from Homeward Bound, since I'm um, such a large agency in the area. So I'm starting to go down the list of um, agencies that I'd meet with and start building those relationships. Thank you. The other thing I'll mention, thank you for reminding me, Jamie. Um, you know, we're going to have a coordinated entry work group, uh, hopefully, uh, started as soon as we finish this meeting and and that group will be refining our coordinated entry system um, making sure that referrals for things like permanent supportive housing go through a review and prioritization process um, and that that process is is both um, efficient and and equitable um, so that you know we're we're not using a tool that that is, has a discriminatory impact. Um, so that we are 
trying to remember how to think as a system after COVID, um, and, and we would encourage you to also think of the continuum of care as a system, not just individual agencies that, that you need to reach out to. Definitely, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, goal adoption. Uh, the National Alliance recommended that we uh, establish a North Star goal. They suggested uh, a goal to reduce unsheltered homelessness by 50% in two years, meaning by the time of the 2025 uh, point in time count um, compared to last year's point in time count. Um, is there any, oh, it looks like the projector is, is oh, there it is, okay. Um, any discussion about this or a motion? Are you asking for a motion to adopt this as a goal? Yes. I will motion that. I second. Moved by Joelle, seconded by Sarah. Any discussion? The only question, the only thing I wonder about is should we add that part around the dates in? Because I do feel like it's a little unclear as to what we're talking about, like what numbers, if we just utilize that sentence. So like should we add the additional content around like in comparison of last year data with 2025 data? Um, let's, let's reflect that in the minutes. I don't know that we need to revise the goal, but I think we could say, just to have a date in there, that we our goal is to reduce unsheltered homelessness by 50% um, by January 31, 2025, point in time count. Is that okay with people? Are we going made? off 2022's PIT or the new PIT? They suggested 2022. I'm, I'm I think we're going to beat that goal either way, but okay. you know, I think if, if we set our minds to it, we, we definitely can. So, any other discussion, questions, comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's unanimous. <clears throat> Uh, the National Alliance also recommended that we adopt community values um, around our future activities, and they um, see if I have them in my packet here. Kind of hard to read on the screen, and I won't read it, them all literally, but the first one is be bold. Um, create, second is create accountable and transparent governance structures. Uh, third is build trust through unity, collaboration, and justice. Fourth is focus on housing solutions. Fifth is value the voice of people with lived experience of homelessness. Sixth, maintain fidelity to data and evidence. Seventh, politics will not drive policies. And eighth, focus on our future. Any discussion around those values? Um, is there any way that, uh, or maybe I missed it, um, but talking about the quality of the services that, that are being provided, because um, that's come up in a lot of conversations lately, is to make sure that um, while we're collecting data, um, that we don't become solely focused on what the data represents, but make sure that it's quality data driven by quality work.
I also feel like, and maybe I'm missing it in here, but oh, um, a commitment to equity, yeah. both in funding and practices, <clears throat> in access to services. So to Marcus's question, I think the fidelity to data says the COC will employ and train ev evidence-based approaches, including housing first, trauma-informed care, and harm reduction across the service delivery system. Um, doesn't specifically say quality, but okay. certainly focuses on, um, you know, the, the theoretical underpinnings and kind of the structures that we want to have in place. Okay. I just want us to, you know, remain and bring to the forefront um, just to push for quality um, better than what we've done before. Can I suggest that you could certainly wordsmith any of these so we could, you could just add, maybe add a clause into that, that section you had just identified? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm, I'm fine with the word and I just want it to be part of our process and thinking moving forward. Um, and then maybe uh, when it comes to actually putting uh, policy, structure, and procedures into place, that that'd be a focus area for us. But Marcus, since you lifted that, I mean, I do wonder if we could not just add maintain fidelity to quality data and evidence. I think that's a really important piece. I mean, you can gather data, but if it's not appropriate right. quality data to move forward on decisions. So I thought that was a really important. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that word. Is it just quality data or is it quality services? Uh, for, for me, it, I think it's both. Um, yeah. I think if it's quality services, the data will reflect. Uh, exactly what that is. I think we would have to define quality. Um, if we get re really detailed in that, quality mm -hmm. means different things for different people. Um, so I think we, we have to be careful with that. If we have currently have quality metrics that we use, then I think that's a starting point. Right. And I, I would consider the quality metrics to be these community values that we're working on right now. Um, Semantics are hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think I think uh, do do um, do we feel like we need to do it by committee right this second? I think we can add a sentence around quality and bring it back next month and make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Agreed. Um, Jen's question about equity, um, both for the BIPOC community and the LGBTQ plus community, um, where would that fit best, I think, under It could fit under building trust through unity, collaboration, and justice. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Are we okay with adding a sentence between now and next month related to? I don't know. I mean, I almost feel like, you know, like Fulton County has an equity action plan. The city is very committed to that as well. It's like many of our partners are. I wonder if it shouldn't be its own standing value of equity in funding and delivery and access. I'm fine with that too. I don't I'm think so. Okay. I think a lot of people who go for grants, that we give grants to, at the end of the day, if you, if you walk through and you looked at the, the body of people that work for them, their janitors are the minorities and the hiring practices aren't anything that I would give a grant to. So no, I think it really needs to be spelled out once and for all. But spelled out as its own community value, LDN? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll build a ninth one focused on equity. Any other discussion? David, may I take a turn to visit? Please. Councilwoman Ronnie. 
Thank you for this um, point of privilege. I am your city council liaison. I have requested a county commission liaison as well. Um, so I'll be sending a report from this meeting with your recommendations to both the city and the county. And I just wanted to ask for some clarification. Um, I heard a conversation happen around quality of data and quality of service. And I'm wondering how you do the measuring part. Is, is there in your conversation a question about how we review what we've done? And does that need to be named explicitly? Because I heard that in the tone, but I didn't hear it in the final wording. I think it's going to come through the performance measures that, that we adopt. Um, and that's, that's not spelled out here, but it certainly will fit into those. And I think um, we're going to talk about racial equity with one of the work groups in just a few minutes. But I think that uh, Emily, you may have something to add to that. But. Thank you. Um, I, I think part of where this lives is in the written standards for the continuum of care, which is a charge of every continuum of care. We do have some written standards, but they're very outdated, haven't been um, sort of reviewed and updated in, since before we knew a pandemic was coming. And so, uh, so I, think, I think where quality really gets spelled out is in those written standards. And they certainly be can developed. be, and uh, that overarching goal can certainly be incorporated in a new governing document um, along with these community values. And then the second thing I think of is both the city and the county have non-discrimination ordinances and hearing like if we're going to look at what's happening with those two arms, but we're moving outside into a new structure, um, does, does this body have an appetite for addressing explicitly um, black, indigenous, and people of color, and also LGBTQ members of our community because of the disparities? I think we do. That's my... Anybody feel otherwise? Thank you for your consideration. I had an observation during the grant process, many of the applicants include their staffing, policies and their numbers regarding that and many of the applications include what would fall under quality where they measure staff turnout and staff burnout and doing specific strategies to keep staff level of participate excuse me participation as quality driven as they can Thank you, Jamie. Any other preliminary discussion? You know, we can add to these values if, if we find we've forgotten something. Yeah. Do we have a motion to, to approve the values as, you know, subject to the discussion that we've just had? Yeah, I, I just want to make sure um, to kind of uh, Councilwoman Roney's comment and then also kind of a comment I just heard um, around disabilities too and so access. Um, so I've kind of said that in regards to the equity piece. Um, in my world, whenever I utilize the DEI language, I also add that A, that accessibility piece. And so I just want to continue to lift that up. We can build services, but if people can't access them, it's, it's empty space for individuals. So. I agree with making sure that disability is covered. I think a lot of our work is around people with disabilities of different kinds. Um, I personally <clears throat> want to make sure that we that often other categories tend to uh, outweigh the recognition of uh, historical discrimination and ongoing discrimination, discrimination against uh, people of color. So I would I want us to at least keep that forefront in our minds. Um, and, and I'll give an example of that. The, the VI SPDAT, which is our assessment tool that we adopted a few years ago, uh, focuses very much on health conditions and, and mental health conditions and focuses very much on disability. And for whatever reason, it has a discriminatory impact on people of color. Fewer <clears throat> fewer people of color rise to the top of that assessment 
in proportion to their um, percentage of the population, of the homeless population. So, um, so we need to keep all of those things in mind, but we need to particularly focus on that one. Do we have a motion on the initial cut? <clears throat> I have an observation on, is it pronounced BDAT? VI SPDAT. SPDAT. <clears throat> vulnerability index is what the document actually starts with. I was afraid and intimidated and didn't answer it thoroughly. And when it came time to use it, like with BIA, it didn't accurately reflect my need. That's a great observation. Thank you, Jamie. And probably sh true for many people. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the community values? Motion. I was just going to comment and say, can I suggest we not vote on these today until we add our ninth one and look at the words on, on a couple of the other ones? I would prefer to be bold and adopt these today and add to them next month if we need to. And, and add to them next month. I mean, I think we, we definitely need one <coughs> around equity. And we need to fold the quality in either as its own goal or as, you know, as part of one of these. But, so we'll, we'll bring it back next month. But it's, it's, up, to, it's up to you all to decide if there's a motion to, to approve it. So can we motion to approve? Pull well, your mic we, down. But the community values stand no, as an agenda. Oh, so can we motion to approve? The community values as they stand with an addendum next month? Yes. I mean, we can, we can make the addendum next month. Well, that was that. That's my motion. That's your motion. <laughs> OK. Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion? I'm unclear on the vote. I'm sorry. So is it that, that we would approve these community values with the with addition an of and specifically month. the equity value we will add next month, is that what we're saying? Or the with any addendum next month, because we may decide that there's something else to add as well. So with the additional two addendums for the equity and inclusion and the uh, data inclusion. Can, can I suggest a slight revision of the Sure, motion? absolutely. So no. We, <laughs> <laughs> if we approve these community values and um, direct staff to uh, draft some additional language to be voted on next month related to quality and uh, equity. Is that okay? Second. Uh, <laughs> you made the motion. Is there a second? Oh, Mark has seconded. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. All right, so now to the nitty gritty. Um, so the goals that are the key priorities that NAEH uh, recommended, there were eight of them. Uh, one is to improve system governance, um, specifically by uh, at least restructuring our governing body so that we're not all appointed by the city or county. Um, second one is to implement an encampment resolution policy. Third is to build the capacity of street outreach, and I would say capacity and coordination. Uh, fourth is to increase the crisis response capacity, meaning shelter um, primarily. Uh, fifth is to begin system improvements for the coordinated entry system. The sixth, even though it's numbered five in their list, is to um, create a high utilizer targeted initiative. Seventh is to promote a housing search. And eighth is to implement move on, moving on strategies for people who are currently in the system but could, could continue with either with a voucher, a Section 8 voucher, or some other supportive services. So <clears throat> these suggested work groups 
for the for today, and we can always have add more work groups also. But to prioritize our work, they really fo focus on the first five initially of these goals. First one is a governance work group. Um, and before we start talking about membership, this is a draft charge for that work group. Um, you guys have had it for a couple days. I don't know if anybody wants to discuss it further, or we can we can do two one of two things. We can try to wordsmith things right here, or we can hand them over to the work groups and see if they have any changes for us to consider next week or next month. But I guess I'd like to know if we're if people are generally okay with this focus on governance. So, David, I'm, yes, I'm in agreement with the governance work group. However, I do have some concerns about that first sentence saying that it's based on one of the models. I think part of it is to see what model fits, fits in our community and not, that's the only wordsmithing that I would do is not limit us to only the three options that were presented by the Alliance. Um, sure. <clears throat> At least, can it say considering the models recommended yeah. by NAEH? Yes. And. And I would encourage, this governance work group could easily go down a rabbit hole of talking for months about governance. Um, there are some good models there, that, and, and obviously we need to customize them to fit Asheville, but I think we need to, um, we, there's going to be more work for this group to do when we're done with the governance piece. So um, I, don't think, I don't think we want to be in the position of trying to approve this this time next year. I think we want to move quicker than that, if possible. All right. Um, I don't, we'll come back to the membership in just a minute, but let's go to the next charge, if, unless there's any other comment. Ms. Roney. Thank you for, um, a moment of consideration before you get into the membership. I did have some curiosity um, after the three hour meeting that we had of the, the county commission and the city council together, and then the six hour HIAC meeting that we had the very next day, and I saw all of you in both of those meetings, and it was um, clear to me that we had some folks that were had some compensation for their time there and some folks that didn't. And we say that we, we desire to have people with lived experience at the table so my question to my um, peers at the city and the county level, um, the electeds was, are we prepared to support with the stipend to address um, the ability for people to show up and to honor the experience that they bring to the table as a, not unlike a consultant, and we would be paying for a consultant, so paying for the experience seems appropriate. And I wondered um, if, if we might invite a recommendation around that, and I've, I've been told to ask if you might consider it in your recommendations regarding membership so that more folks might feel like they could sign up to do additional work outside of already these meetings being volunteer efforts. So this would be a stipend of some kind for participation by people with lived experience? The way Durham structures their advisory board stipends is around just addressing equity seats at the table so that folks might um, apply based on different needs. It could be transportation, um, child care, time away from um, their daily obligations. So there are models in North Carolina for that. I, I think the question is whether or not it would be an hourly stipend or a per meeting stipend. I think the question for, from us for y'all today is if you would recommend that we pursue something at all. Okay, let's yes. remember to vote on that. Thank you for your consideration. Is there anybody object to it? Well, I don't object, but the, would it come from this committee today or would it come in conversation with the governance committee so that we would have an opportunity to look at what Durham is doing and maybe what, or unless there's a recommendation on like what that would be? I don't think that you're asking for a specific decision or recommendation on what, it, what the compensation would be, just whether we support the concept in general to be explored further. Right, and I think that even before we're getting ready to ask um, this body to do such a labor-intensive work, 
um, that it might include a stipend for the work group work as well. So I think it, my suggestion would be um, one might consider it at the front of the conversation instead of after. So that folks might be able to sign up for work groups. Okay, so do we, um, do we generally support uh, developing a compensation structure for people with lived experience and others who may need support in attending meetings and that sort of thing. Others who are serving as consultants. Yeah, I think we need to listen to people with lived experience on this question as to exactly how to structure it. I think, you know, for some people, a, a, a more generous payment by the hour will impact their rent um, if they're in a subsidized rental unit. And you know, I think what the the housing authority standard for for stipends is two hundred dollars a month, based on a HUD requirement that we don't have to count that towards people's income. So that's that's one option to consider. Uh, on the other hand, maybe you know, maybe it should be an hourly, and then people would just have to report that if they're on a subsidized rent. Uh, so I think. In terms of developing the specifics, there are some other considerations to take in mind and to account. The question is, do we generally support the idea of compensating uh, people who are not otherwise employed to do this work uh, in some way for participation in our committee and in, in this HIAC committee and in the work groups? Yes. Yes. Is anybody opposed to that, Jamie? You're I'm opposed. I'm not interested in a stipend. I would have to report it. I'm on disability. I think we could figure out a way that we could get you a little something. But that's a good reason for, you know, to think it through and, and not try to say today, here's what it's going to be. So. Right. And so the model from Durham also is you apply. One would apply right. and you could choose to apply or not apply sure. for that stipend if you needed, for example, um, funds for child care or funds for transportation or um, you were in between two different jobs and had to pick up something on the way to work to sustain, you know, for dinner or something like that. If it could be applied or not applied. I'm sorry, I still have another question. So who, who is the we that would do this? So we're just making a recommendation and then city county staff would have a conversation and city would be responsible for the management of that or I'm, that's where I'm like having a little bit the, of a struggle of the next step. The closest that we have here is the community reparations commission does have a stipend for participants and that goes through the um, project manager. So we do, we don't have to start from scratch on this. We could look at that model as a way for people to apply for stipends. Um, I think the pursuit I'm looking at for today is if there's a if there's a barrier to participating in the work groups, whether in this body or outside of this body, and you need um, support for that end, um, it hasn't been expressed yet to the elected bodies. All right. I think we are expressing um, that to the elected bodies that Thank we you. would like to see some money set aside for that, and and we will provide some additional recommendations on how to structure it, either based on the current models locally or possibly the Durham model or and input from people with lived experience in that process. Thank you so much. All right, so let's go to the second work group. So these are the next two key priorities recommended by NAEH. Um, one is to develop and implement an encampment resolution policy about how we approach people who are in encampments and, and what services we offer to them and how much time we give them to respond, things like that. And the other is to build the capacity and I would say coordination of street outreach uh, because we have a lot of agencies in this city and county providing street outreach in a very uncoordinated way at this point. Um, so, and we, in some of our discussions at the retreat, we identified eight or so, of, I 
think, of those agencies. So this is a big charge um, for this group, but, um, and, and if we find out it's too much, we might decide to split it into two different work groups, but it seems like they're related, so this is, that's, this is the suggestion for the charge for the second work group. Any comments, questions, concerns? Okay, I'm going to roll on to the next one. The shelter capacity work group is the fourth goal or fourth key priority out of all the priorities that are all the 128 priorities that are listed in the NAEH uh, report. Um, and this is around our current shelter inventory and around access to our current shelters. I think we have a lot of, a, a couple of big agencies doing good work around shelter in our community, but this, there's still some gaps identified in the study, so this work group will be focusing on finding ways to fill those gaps. Not necessarily a new shelter that fills all the gaps, but you know, identifying locations where different needs can be addressed. Um, some of these are around mental health and substance use. Um, some are around LGBTQ and others around families with children. <coughs> so any comments on this, this work group? Jane? I do. Um, it's kind of a segue. I thought there had been a suggestion, and I think you made it, about enfolding homeless coalition. Because with that work group, 211 would be a really vital contribution. Yes, and that actually, so once we get through these charges, um, we're going to try to identify the core HIAC members of each work group today and make those appointments, but invite them to include others from the community. We want the work groups to remain somewhat nimble and not, you know, not be huge, but also to have full, uh, full participation, certainly by folks in the Homeless Coalition um, and others, people with, other people with lived experience besides the two of you all. Um, so yes, I think the work groups will be more than just um, high action. Any other, any comments about this, this charge? Would we want to add a sentence about, you know, paying specific attention to the recommendations from the Alliance? Because they were pretty clear about the number of beds per type of individual that were needed, not just 30%. Um, so I don't know if that's anything that we want to identify specifically um, in kind of the, the work group's mission. Uh, the 30% comes directly from their report. I'm sorry, Gabe, what? The 30% comes directly from their report, but I, I understand that we can, we can add in the, the number of types of, the types of beds that they were recommending and the number as, as part of that. Were you, uh, I'm sorry, were you alluding to uh, population types in shelters, why there aren't particular population types in shelters as uh, for criteria? 
No, um, that's a good point. But no, I was um, alluding to the Alliance earmark specifically what those beds should be. They, um, I think it was 60 for um, adults that are not veteran linked. Um, I believe 25 for families and 10 for 10 beds um, with supportive services. Okay. I, oh, 25 and 10. I'm sorry, I didn't have it right in front of me. 10 for families and 25. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. And maybe we don't, like maybe we don't want to earmark it more, but I was just saying where that 30% came from was based on the Alliance report. Sure, sure. And then maybe that other 70% can be why you don't have certain criteria in your shelters. So the work group should definitely look back at the at the report and and at other information that we have and can gather in the community about where the gaps may be. Um, any other questions about this one? All right, and then the last one for today, coordinated entry system. Okay, so this one I did edit or incorporate some additional language from the report. Um, obviously, coordinated entry is very important. Um, it is the place where uh, either we have flow through our system or we don't. Um, not always the fault of the people who are sitting in the coordinated entry system, but this is you know, a, a focus of our, our, our continuum of care as a system um, to make sure that people are prioritized and served um, in a reasonable way and that they end as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, the, this I specifically added that this work group will focus on the coordinated entry system assessment tool and utilize emerging best practices to ensure racial and gender equity and transparency in permanent housing placements. So we know now that the vulnerability index uh, but alone, standing alone, um, discriminates against people of color um, or has a discriminatory impact. It's a structural system that we need to change. Um, so part of this committee's uh, work will be to make sure that we, that we develop our assessment tool or our process so that we don't have those racial disparities. Are we going to be able to include laws that govern practices of Rentals, I mean, tenant rights again, landlord rights included as well, standard leasing. I mean, like I said, a, a landlord can write their own lease, but when all else fails, there should be a standard practice of how things are governed. Or it can be happy tenants with whatever landlord rights, but when it fails, something has to be put in place that is standard. Can I suggest, I, I think where that would live is not with coordinated entry, but is related to the quality of service that Marcus talked about earlier. And where, where I would suggest that would live is in those written standards that again, we, we have a lot of work to do in developing sure. those. Um, but that's exactly the kind of thing that we, that you know, the Continuum of Care Board ought to be ensuring as part of our structure. Okay. Thanks, Elvia. Mm -hmm. Any other? thoughts on this charge? Well, I just have a question about this one because I'm still learning about this coordinated entry system, but Marcus is helping to teach me a lot. But one of the things that I feel like I'm also not seeing here is about maybe recruiting additional members um, to the coordinated entry system, if, or maybe I'm misunderstanding, but Marcus, based on some conversations we've had, I'm wondering if everybody who could or should be utilizing this platform is utilizing it here in Buncombe. I would say they may not be, um, and that goes back to um, how we utilize data, how we make recommendations for um, sheltering and what that sheltering looks like, and, and 
actually being able to provide quality like we talk about is, um, you know, am I, am I sending somebody to an appropriate housing intervention uh, or are they going to return to the streets because it's not, um, it's not beneficial for them to be there? Um, so I, I think um, part of what coordinated entry would be doing and looking for key partners would be reaching out to folks in the community to see if they want to participate, um, especially if they're um, agencies that have shelters that can be provided. Um, hopefully some of the shelter placement would come through that coordinated entry process. And um, I, I think I would also um, look at uh, some type of mechanism for understanding, that, and I think that falls under education, is you know, um, are our providers understanding what, um, what the assessment is, what it does, what it's meant for, how to actually um, utilize it in uh, the folks who are receiving the assessment. Do they understand what's being asked of them? I think those were two of the uh, biggest criticisms with the BIS for that, is understanding on both sides. Does that answer your question, Jenny? Mm -hmm. Any other comments on this one? So can I get a motion to approve these initial charges for the work groups? Subject to enhancement. Second. Uh, moved by Jen, seconded by David Bartholomew. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, so, as we, so we need core membership in these work groups. Um, we did get some volunteers. Um, at the at the retreat, um, and James, I mean Emily, and I have uh, kind of been a little bit brainstorming, but I well, do you want me to suggest the names, or do you want to um, volunteer again at this point? No, but I do have a comment on the governance or request for the governance committee members. Mm -hmm. If we could have a city attorney and county attorney check of conflict of interest, um, or maybe you know dismantling a large structure, re remantling a large structure, so it'd be great to be transparent with who's on that committee. Can you be more specific about the conflict of interest that you're thinking of? Oh, I just think we want to be on record having those conflict of interest checks for the governance committee members. I would defer. I'm not an attorney, so I would defer to their professional check. So what would the, but I'm trying to, I think we can try to identify any conflicts of interest that exist, um, but I'm not sure why we need the city and county attorney to do that. In the interest of transparency, particularly because we're dismantling a large uh, governance committee and remantling, I mean, you know, reconstituting one. Uh, those are really major decisions about millions of dollars also and policy, so I would just feel comfortable having an external check from right. the city attorney and the county <clears throat> attorney. Okay. That, that makes sense. Um, all right, so... Uh, for coordinated entry, um, and this is based on volunteers and discussion, uh, we're suggesting Joelle, Marcus, Tricia, and Celeste to be the HIAC core and to bring in members identified by the Homeless Coalition. Um, of course, there will be support from city staff for each of the work groups. And I think there may be support from or participation by county staff as well. Is that or is everybody I mentioned willing to? Yes. To serve. Yes. Yes. Is this for what? 
for the coordinated entry. entry. Um, we, we didn't try to double assign you all, but if, if anybody, and, and we certainly need, if, if our two HIAC members um, who are people with lived experience uh, don't have time to participate in multiple work groups, um, we'll need to identify somebody else who, who can do that for coordinated entry. Uh, for the shelter capacity work group, um, it was Tim McElyer, Dustin Mailman, Jamie Benshoff, and myself. I also took notes from that last meeting, and I believe there was somebody from the Neighborhood Association that had wanted to attend, so whether that was Rick or someone from his organization had been interested, I believe, in attending that as yeah, well. I Helen, do you want to make any comments? I don't. Uh, it's, a, it's not me, it's a different person, but you can take it Okay, so that would be another thing for the work groups to consider to, you know, have a representative from the, from the neighborhoods on each work group, in addition to a person with lived experience. I'm going to encourage Rick not to be on multiple work groups himself, but I think that is an important voice for our conversation. Yeah, he wants to be on one. Mm -hmm. I know which one he wants to be on. Um, outreach and encampments, um, or possibly we could identify it as unsheltered um, work group. Um, Claire Hubbard, Elvia Diaz, Sarah Coffley, and possibly Lance, are the, but are there any other recommendations? You, Helen, so, okay, so, um, Helen Hyatt, I mean, we won't make that appointment, but we'll make a note in the minutes that, that you're interested as a, as a um, neighborhood representative. Do you have a strong preference between this one and governance. I prefer governance. I prefer governance as well. I can do both. I don't, I don't mind. But I prefer governance. Um, Sarah, nobody else is here <laughs> besides you today uh, and Elvia. I mean, we can, is there anybody I, I else? I didn't sign up for that. I really don't have expertise in outreach, so I'm, I'm happy to take notes, but I don't think I could be a really um, contributing member. I think, well, let's talk more about that, if you're willing to be a participant there. I don't, I'm, I don't want everybody to want to be on governance, because it's all going to come back to us. I, I'm willing, David, you can put me on whichever one. In addition to finance, I'll be on one of these four. Okay. But, that's, that's it, so whichever will help you. All right, we'll keep working on another, potentially another. I person. assume that's the one Dustin would be on, correct? Yeah, Is no, that... uh, Dustin's on shelter. Okay. All right, so the, the core will be Claire, Elvia, and Sarah for right now, and we'll see if there's another the work groups will be recruiting other folks, so there may be somebody from the homeless coalition uh, who would be in. And then for governance, um, Jen, Rick, David Bartholomew, Lance, and Elvia. The 
that sound okay to everybody? And then, okay. So, did we get enough notes on that to, to take a motion and a vote on that membership? Did anybody get left out who's at the table today or not at the table today? I think everyone's represented. Okay. <coughs> and I'm going to do some floating a little bit on these other ones, just at least to, for the kickoff meetings. Um, all right. So do I have a motion to approve those appointments to the work groups? I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? Sorry, who was the second? Me. Marcus. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll, I'll talk louder. Okay. <laughs> Motion by Celeste, second by Marcus. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? David, can I ask one clarifying question or just to reiterate? Um, electeds are able to join any meetings that they would like. Is that true? Yes. Okay. I would, I'm going to encourage the work groups to try to stay nimble, to try to meet at least twice a month, starting with another meeting this month, um, and to try to stay focused on, on written outcomes of some kind you know, within the next three months. I think this is our time to be bold and to, to take leadership. I think we should not look at this from a scarcity mentality. We should look at it from an abundance mentality that we have resources that we need in our community to solve these problems and that we just need to bring them all in a coordinated way to, to address our goals, both our work group goals, but our overall system goals, and our overall system goals. And let's remember the, the pandemic. Um, what can we accomplish if we say yes? It's a, for the, for the folks that we seek to serve and that we seek to, you know, find real solutions for, this is as bad or worse than the pandemic. So now is our time to act. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, before we move on from the committees, did we identify who's gonna chair or facilitate this? I just would like, to, yeah. I suggest, uh, Jen, if you would convene the first meeting and the work groups can decide who the leadership is. Sarah, would you mind convening? As I said, no, I, I can't chair that because I'm no, not an not expert, but I'm happy anything. to take notes. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, can you or Joelle convene the coordinated entry? Yes. And we still need to work a little bit on encampments, but we'll talk about that. And then um, I'll convene the, the shelter group but not necessarily serve as the chair of that. Could encampments be folded into outreach? Encampments are in outreach. Okay. Encampment, an encampment resolution is part of okay. what's like sort of the first task of outreach. Okay, I didn't know if you were talking about a separate work group for encampments. No. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? Um, just one question for the purpose of minutes. We talked a little bit about having a standard charter for each work group. Um, is that something we can have before our next meeting, so sometime this month? Um, well, that was the intent of these statements. So not, a, not a charter in per se, uh, okay. but, a, but a, a task assignment for them. Is there something else that you think would be useful to add to a one-pager? Not necessarily. I, I think we all just 
want to have some clear direction. So yeah. whether that's um, you know actionable items from each work group, timelines, and that sort of thing, that certainly can be done in each work group. Uh, but we may want to set a tempo as a larger group. I just want to say thank you, David, for putting this together. I think it's really difficult to move forward with these big goals and get them started immediately and to put this together for us. I think there'll be plenty of time for us to try to adjust the language, work on our goals. It's an ongoing process, and just getting these things formed mm -hmm. and, and started on the work I think is really important. So thank you for, for doing that. Thank you. Thanks to everybody here for you know being part of the process and for we're agreeing to, to be on a work group. All right, what else do we have on the agenda? Um, I guess did we establish a timeline? It would be good to, I think we need to a report back from each work group at every IAC meeting, you know, to let us know where you are. And, um, and again, we're going to try to achieve concrete results. So for governance, that would be at least a, a draft governance charter of some kind within the next three months. Um, for encampments and outreach, it would be an, a draft encampments um, policy uh, for coordinated entry, I don't know, maybe some revisions of the current process. And for shelter, uh, a strategic plan of, or a draft strategic plan of how we're going to go about it. And then for the other goals, just so everybody's thinking forward, um, the high utilizer initiative and the housing surge um, could be the next action items for coordinated entry. And we're going to have a good opportunity for a housing surge later this year or early next with the permanent supportive housing opportunities coming online. So that we need to sort of keep that in the middle of our minds. And then moving on strategies, um, there is, we can, that'll, that'll need to be something we take up next. Some group. All right. Do we have any public comment or? Can I actually, can I add one thing before, sorry, to the yes. public? Um, I, I just want to name for you all and also for community folks that um, I would anticipate that the governance work group will, as they build out that structure, that will include some standing committees um, that will need to attend to the, the work, uh, the ongoing work of the continuum of care in addition to kind of topical work groups that may form, you know, may get formed and dissolved over time. Um, so that's to say there is some, some of the things we need to look at, like written standards and performance measures and those, those kinds of um, preparation work for the continuum of care application and ongoing data evaluation, monitoring. I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity to build out some of that structure, um, which is also to say for community folks, I think that there will be many opportunities to participate as the structure develops further. Thanks, Emily. Public comment? Yeah. Yes. I have two questions. Um, so Michael Woods tells me he's got 110 people that have gone through his system. They're sober. They're, you know, really like working. But he has no way to put them. So what? How do? How does the community think about addressing a person who was homeless, went to the mission? did everything they were supposed to do, and now there's nowhere to put them. And then with the largest um, rental, um, apartment rental place, um, no longer taking vouchers, that's a huge, we now have another massive gap in our community that I don't really know what we're doing to address it. So even if we do all this stuff, we've still got this huge hole. And my other question is, um, I understand that neither uh, the rescue mission or ABCCM will cooperate with the HCM, HMIS system. So how do you ever collate data to know like what capacity, what beds, 
what's going on. And I don't know if there's a way that you can force them to cooperate. If, like Michael, is 100% privately funded, he doesn't have to do anything you guys ask. So he can, you know, he's running a, a great place, but how does he flow into our, this grand system that we're talking about? And how does ABCCM also work into the system and be, so we're all rowing in the same boat, boat as the lady of the Homeless Coalition said. And, you know, she's very concerned that all the people that have made homelessness into an industry, they don't really want to solve it. They just want to keep getting funds, doing what they're doing. They're all there looking out for their little pee pad, as she called it. And so how do you get everybody cooperating to solve it when it's so lucrative for them? I don't Thank you for both of those comments, and I'm, I'm not going to respond to all yeah. the comments, but one of your comments really reminded me of something. We have two elected leaders here, um, and anybody else who might be listening or talking with folks. We have uh, the first comment about where are permanent housing options, uh, where are people supposed to go when they graduate from shelter or transitional or come in a housing first model from the street. Um, we have four approved low-income housing tax credit projects in Asheville and Buncombe County right now. All of them are facing serious funding gaps because of construction costs and interest rates. So my request, and all of them, when they're built, will be required to accept vouchers and will have some targeted units for, for, um, for people in the, in the population that we're talking about, or they, they could house people that would free up other opportunities for people experiencing homelessness. So my request to both elected bodies and to the staff of those bodies is that we find a way to fund all of those projects this year. We've never had this many opportunities for permanent housing units. Um, they will all be required to accept vouchers, so let's find a way to do that. We have the resources. We can make it happen. May well, I ask one of them is ours, um, but yeah. one of them is, but, you know, and we are also being asked for, uh, the Housing Authority is also being asked for project-based voucher support by some of them, and we'll, we'll be able to, to pitch in. So that's part of the answer, I believe, Helen, to, to um, building out the affordable housing capacity this economy is not going to get any better. We're, you know, we're seeing unprecedented pressure on our rental market due to our tourism economy and due to the fact that we have both climate and um, pandemic relocations to our community driving prices up. Um, your other issue, I think, in terms of incorporating all, all providers into a system is, is going to um, be something for the governance committee or work group to, to look at next or some other new subcommittee that's built um, around a funders uh, coalition, which is another recommendation in this report of, you know, for funders getting together to say what, you know, what the minimum standards are for, for folks that are providing services in our community. So that's my moment of privilege. Emily, you want to add anything to that? Um, just two, two comments to that. ABCCM does participate in HMIS, so just a clarification that they, they do enter their data into HMIS. Um, and the other about, um, you know, folks who have, have been in shelter programs and are in need of housing, um, I would say that is certainly the intention of coordinated entry. That is a component of a coordinated entry system, is as we as folks move through homeless services across the community, what's the exit pathway that will be most successful for them? And can we streamline that so that it is easy for people to access, so that it's right size to their particular need? Um, and, our, and coordinated entry does exist in our community right now, but it is very cumbersome, difficult to navigate. We don't have a lot of housing resources for people who are not veterans, and so um, there's not, not been, it's not been very compelling for providers to participate in that system because there aren't strong outcomes currently. So a lot of work for that coordinated entry work group to, to lead in building out that system. But I think a, an effective pathway for getting folks from shelter into permanent housing is part of the 
the charge of the continuum of care. All right. So without eating into all the public comment time, let's go ahead on that. I just wanted to add that, you know, I, I recently spoke with a man who has a lot of property and he's building homes and he's creating jobs. He wants to give jobs to people who want to live on his property. And he wants to end uh, the problem with health care and the elderly getting older. And he has all these great ideas. And I'm like, why don't people know about what you want to do? And I introduced some ideas about this. And he's like, why didn't anybody tell me this? People have been thwarting me for years doing this work. And he's built, he spent over a million dollars on his project out of pocket. He's still adamant about what he's doing. And, you know, the problem is, is that you're right. Everybody wants the glory in this work. And nothing's getting done. So All right. don't hold your breath, but we're still working on it. So, yeah, it, it, it's good things are going to happen. I promise you. All right. Thanks for having me. I'll keep mine um, short, simple. Um, my name is Paige Weber. I am the housing program coordinator for HelpMeet. Um, I've worked with HelpMate for a little over four years. Um, I just wanted to make note um, that HelpMate has requested um, to be part of the coordinated entry assessment work group, um, both as an active member of CAM and also um, a significant um, shelter provider here in the community. We also have a really strong and documented precedent for having a seat on HIAC and um, being a, a participant. So just wanted to note that. Thank you. That's, thank you. You got that, Liz? Any other public comment? My name is Mary Singer, and I would like to propose a contribution to Hayek in some capacity. I have well over 10 years of lived experience as a homeless woman, mostly in Buncombe County and all over the United States of America. I have a vast amount of information and knowledge and experience to contribute, and I also would like to propose that I be compensated for that knowledge. Thank you very much. Can we talk afterwards? Any other public comments? All right, next meeting, March 9th, 9 o'clock, same place. Come back, come back with your reports. Any other business? So we're adjourned.